Hi, it's Tulsi Noreen, Solution Engineer with Addo. In this video, I'll discuss Microsoft SQL Backup and Restoration using Datto BCDR. To keep this recording concise, I'll focus the demonstration on SQL database set in simple and full recovery model. Let's begin with simple recovery model. The simple recovery model automatically reclaim log space to keep the space requirement of databases small. In essence, there is no log backup. When a Datto agent or true VMware agent list initiates a backup, SQL VSS writers are invoked to queue as the database. A checkpoint writes the current in-memory modified pages, also known as dirty pages, and transaction log information from memory to disk, and also record information in the transaction log. Let's see how this works. I'm here in SSMS. To check what type of model this database is set in, I'll right-click on the Adventure Work database and head to Properties. From the Properties model, I'll select the View option. I can see the recovery model is set to Simple. Heading back to the General View, I can see the last database backup timestamp. This is filled out when a checkpoint occurs in the system. We can see this in action if I navigate to the SQL system backup in my BCDR appliance. Click on start a backup, initiate the backup process. For this system, I'm utilizing VMware agentless to take the backups. It in turn utilizes VMware tools sitting within Windows to QS all VSS writers, placing all memory records in a safe place by flushing to disk. Once that is complete, it initializes the transfer of the snapshot to the appliance for person. Now the backup is finished, I can head back over to SSMS and view the properties of the database. And as expected, the last backup timestamp was updated. To begin the restore process of this database, we'll want to first take this database offline and detach it. I'll right click on the Adventure Work database, head over to Task, and select Take Offline. I'll check Drop All Active Connection and press OK. If I wish not to keep this database in my view, I can take further action by detaching it from the database tree. With the database taken offline, I'll append a file name so I can refer back to this database at a later time if needed. Navigating to the database location, I'll right click to rename and append the word all to the master database file. With the file rename, I'll navigate to the BCD appliance and perform a file and folder level restore utilizing the Data Series appliance. From the restore menu, I'll select the AMG SQL server, select file restore, and then start to restore with the latest snapshot. Clicking on mount, mounts a snapshot as an SMB share on the Data appliance. I'll copy the network path and paste it in Windows File Explorer, then navigate to the C volume where the SQL database is stored. Within a SQL database folder, I'll copy the AdventureWorks MDF from this location and paste it into the same location on a production server. With the copy process completed, I'll head back to SSMS and right-click on the database, then select Attach. Clicking on Add exposes all the databases I can mount. I'll select the AdventureWorks database we copied over earlier and press on OK, and then close out the remaining of the menu options. And that's a complete process in restoring a database in simple recovery model. Before we take a look at considerations to protect database in full or bulk recovery model, let's examine the crawl on track utility provided with both the Cirrus and Alto appliances. If your recovery intent is to restore a few tables, this tool is the answer. On track for SQL works by mounting a source copy of the data in this case, it'll be the MDF file from the Cirrus appliance. And for the target, it will be the production SQL data store. I have mounted both the source and target. If I expand both views, I'm able to actually see the tables and associate records within the tables. If my use case was to copy over the human resource department table, I can easily drag it from the source to the target. 
I don't actually want to perform that change, but this gives you the general idea behind this product. All right, let's take a look at recovering databases in full or bulk recovery model. These databases require their logs to be protected and no work is lost due to a loss or damaged data file. Let's head back into SSMS and take a look at a couple of considerations. I'll right click on the Adventure Work database to access the properties view. Under options, you'll notice our database now is set in full recovery model. Under files, I keep the MDF or master data file on the C volume and I have moved the logs to a separate volume. This is my design and it'll allow for a more efficient backup and use of our space. When configuring a backup for this server, we'll only want to protect the C volume and ignore our E volume where the logs are being kept on. The log file will cause this volume to grow and shrink, creating huge blocks of changes to which if we capture, will create large incremental backups. For some restore procedures, you may want to back up the transaction on log. For this, data recommends using a maintenance plan where the transaction logs can be protected to the Dado Appliances NAS share. In the Dado Appliance, you will want to visit the File Share option and create a network share. I have previously created one called SQL to store the logs. I'll copy this network address and paste it within a maintenance plan wizard when prompted to enter a destination for the transaction logs. Recovery in this scenario will be similar to what we have covered already. The log files, if important, will need to be copied over to their destination from the appliance share. To keep the appliance from not filling up with log files, we recommend compressing the backups. This option can be found by editing the maintenance plan you created earlier and viewing the options tab. From here, you can set the backup to use compression. You'll want to not confuse the backup set will expire timeframe with deletion of backups. When setting this flag, it ensures backups don't get overwritten for that time frame. To keep backups small on the appliance, we recommend creating a maintenance cleanup task. This task can be configured to delete files older than four weeks, for instance. The Cirrus Appliance SQL Share snapshots data hourly by default and replicates daily. Thus, if there is a need for historical recovery, the local appliance or data center will have point-in-time copies of those backups. SQL maintenance plans are also very useful for full and differential backups. This is especially true if you are running a failover cluster or CSV. In these setups, we don't recommend utilizing the data agents for backing up the VMs as volume hole in the MDF may not be visible. Maintenance plan allows for database rollbacks and better RPOs where a full backup can be done weekly with daily differential and log backups every 10 to 15 minutes. Performing database backup in this manner is highly desirable to DBAs as it allows for granularity. Restoring of database is done at SSMS, where each points are visible, including the backup timeline, which provides an easy way to filter out particular time frame. If a historical point require restoration, select the device option and mount the restore point of SQL snapshot on the local appliance. You'll want to provide a network share path we are prompted to expand the restore points. Crawl on track for SQL can also be used with these files created by the maintenance plan, allowing for granular restore of tables. However, your preference may be to temporarily restore the databases with another name within SSMS, which open up additional flexibility to restore items such as views and store procedures. This wrap up our video on best practice when backing up and restoring SQL database. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you.